Number 67, integrated concepts. To get an idea of the small effect that temperature has on Archimedes' principle, calculate the fraction of a copper block's weight that is supported by the buoyant force in zero degrees Celsius water, and compare this fraction with the fraction supported in 95 degrees Celsius water. All right, so first thing is, um, basically when we're asked to find the uh, fraction supported uh, according to the buoyant force, we're basically just relating the densities. So I can say something like this, the fraction, fraction supported uh, by the buoyant force of water at zero degrees Celsius will be equal to the density, I'll write the density of water at zero degrees Celsius, uh, divided then by the density of the copper, okay? Now, um, we have to look this value up. The density of water at zero degrees Celsius is roughly 1,000, right, kilogram per cubic meter. So all we have to do basically is just plug in the value 1,000 and then divide it now by the density of copper, which again, if we look that up, is about 8.8 .8 times 10 to the third kilogram per cubic meter. The units of a fraction have to be the same so that the units cancel because a fraction is basically unit less. It's a ratio. So we're just going to take 1,000 then divided by 8.8 .8 times 10 to the third, which is just 8,800 or 8,800. And we realize now that, oops, that was times 10 to the eighth. What am I doing? Uh, so this is 8.8 .8 times 10 to the third. And we get about a value here of about 0 0.114 or so. All right. In other words, if I were to convert that into a percent, about 11.4, 11.4% of the copper block's weight will be supported by the buoyant force of water at zero degrees Celsius. Now, we would do the same analysis now for the water at 95 degrees Celsius, but the difference is, and I'll just call this fraction supported, would be equal to now the density of water at 95 degrees Celsius, divided then by the density of copper. The problem now is we can, I mean we can, in, in terms of practicality, we can use the value of 1,000, all right, as the density of water at 95 degrees Celsius, although that is not true. That is not what the density is of water at 95 degrees Celsius. It changes ever so slightly. So how do we figure that out? Well, you have to remember back to the beginning of the chapter where we talked about concepts of thermal expansion. So we know that the volume of a particular fluid will change if the temperature changes. That's what that formula tells us, okay? So let's assume, let's assume that we have a, you know, one cubic meter uh, value here of, of water. So we have one meter by one meter by one meter, okay? That's what we're gonna start with. That's the original volume. So we'll say VI is equal to one. Now, according to this formula, we realize that the change in volume will be equal to the coefficient of thermal expansion, uh, which is beta here, it's a volumetric expansion, multiplied by the initial volume, then multiplied by the change in temperature. Okay, this change in temperature, you can subtract Celsius or Kelvin, it doesn't matter because the difference between them is going to be the same. So if I had to now calculate the change in volume, right, I would now need the beta value, and this is looked up. The beta value for water is gonna be 210 times 10 to the minus uh, six, then multiply that by the initial volume of one, then multiply it by the change in temperature, final minus initial, so it's 95 minus zero. And lo and behold, let's see what we get. So we get 210 times 10 to the minus six times one times 95, and there's an error in the calculator, so that's good for me. So 210 times 10 to the minus, minus six, then uh, multiplied by one, obviously that's, I don't even need to put that. So here, now the new volume, or the change in volume now, change in volume is going to be 0 0.09, excuse me, 0 0.01995. In other words, if this is the volume I started with, then the volume I would have ended with, the final volume here, okay, the final volume, then would have been one, the original, plus then the change of 0 0.01995. In other words, the final volume then is 1.01995, uh, okay? So if the volume of this water has expanded, but the particles of water has remained the same, meaning the mass has remained the same, what happens to the density? What do you think? Well, here's the formula. Density is equal to mass over volume. 
If volume goes up and mass stays the same, what has to happen mathematically to density? It has to go down, right? You're dividing by a larger value. So we can actually calculate that now, basically, all right? We can, we can essentially calculate that. So the mass, remember that if we, if we had a density before, so let me just, let me just do this. So our density before at zero degrees Celsius was 1000, right? We assumed that we had one cubic meter, so therefore the mass of that block was 1,000 kilograms. Okay, so the mass of this block up here is 1,000 kilograms. Now, what's going to happen is the mass has stayed the same, 1,000, but the volume has now increased, 1.01995. And now we can calculate this new density. All right, so we'll take 1,000 and then divide it by that value. And it works out to be about 980. So this is now 980 uh, kilogram per kilogram per cubic meter. All right. So that should make sense. As we mentioned, the density should go down. So this is now the density of water at 95 degrees Celsius. So now we have to plug in, instead of 1,000 now, it's going to be 980. So let's see, 980 divided then by the density of copper, which is 8.8 .8 times 10 to the third. You might say, well, has that volume changed at all? And should I take that? I think they're talking about that the uh, copper will be the same uh, temperature in both cases. Do I know that for certain? No, I'm assuming that. All right, so this is gonna be divided then by 8.8 .8 times 10 to the third. And what do we get? So here we have now a value of 0.111. All right, in other words, it's going to be about 11.1% now of the copper's mass is going to be supported by the density. So notice how small of a difference there is between these two percents, right? And then if you had to compare the two, you can just do a division if you wanted. You know, you can, you can depends on how you want to, to you, you can talk about the percent change between these percents. You know, you could talk about then the fraction all right, you can, you can take the original value here and divide it by this value, and you can find out how many more times the uh, water at zero degrees Celsius supports uh, the weight of copper than at uh, 95 degrees Celsius, and I'm going to do that. Okay, I'm going to choose the exact values. So when I do that division, we get about one point. Oh, it's the exact same number as this. I didn't even realize that that would happen. So essentially, it's exactly equivalent to this, which should, I don't understand, yeah, it totally makes sense. Because this is the only thing, this is the only thing that is changing, right? The mass of it um, is staying the same, but the volume has changed, and has changed by this fractional amount, since I assumed it to be one. So the actual fractional change between the two is going to be, in other words, 1.01995. Uh, this, so uh, when, the, when the density of water is zero degrees Celsius, when the density of water is, is uh, H2O, is zero degrees Celsius, it will support about a hundredth or two hundredths more <laughs> than, the, uh, than when the density of water is uh, at 95 degrees Celsius. So uh, basically insignificant. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully this helps. Please remember to subscribe and we'll see you next time. Take care.